What would you be willing to do to save a life? A man can live for 40 days without food, three days without water, eight minutes without air, but not a second without hope. Nearly everyone has, at one time or another, felt as if there was no hope for them. Committed to unraveling the complex issues of life, celebrated author, speaker, and singer June Hunt founded Hope for the Heart in 1986 to help those who were hurting and in need of hope. Early family pain was the catalyst that shaped June's compassionate heart and ultimately led to her life's calling. My personal purpose statement, I could say, would be providing biblical hope and practical help to anyone and everyone who needs it. People can feel hopeless for many different reasons. Loss of work, loss of purpose, abuse, grief, pain, chronic illness, overwhelming depression, death of a loved one, unexpected life changes, addictions, divorce, rape, abortion, anxiety. And I remember just the weight of all the anxiety of, you know, five months of looking for a job, the anxiety of um, failed dreams or uh, expectations. And so I, I started, uh, started drinking and that kind of progressed into drugs. And I just found myself in a, in a spiral that was just, you know, getting worse and worse. And I mean, when I say drugs, I mean it was pretty heavy cocaine and methamphetamine use. And, uh, you know, by the, by the age of 17 or 18, I had lost everything and everybody around me. Got into a marriage that was very abusive, verbally and emotionally abusive. Um, he would, you know, just not what a husband would do he you know there would be punches and hits and burns and things like that i grew up in church so i knew that god was good but it was almost like he had ceased to be good to me i got very depressed i wouldn't say i ever thought about committing suicide at that point i didn't think i would have cared if i didn't wake up i love the lord with all my heart but my despair and discouragement and depression was so great that uh, I really felt that I just couldn't go on. It wasn't that I did not have a faith. I was just so burdened down by the pain and the hurt and the disappointment and the frustration uh, of my life at the time. And so I felt very hopeless and very hopeless and very helpless. A call that came into our ministry because of our radio program, Hope in the Night. A woman was driving home to get her gun. She had already written her suicide letter, and she was just going to get the gun. And she happened to hear some program late at night, and there was some word, hope, and she said, there is no hope for me. This is a dear woman who needed to be set free. This woman continues to say, hope for the heart saved my life. You saved my life. I can't imagine a greater compliment. I can't imagine anything more fulfilling than to hear, because of your ministry, I am alive today. Each year, nearly one million people end their journey of isolation and hopelessness by taking their own lives. Would you know how to help them? 
Hope for the Heart exists to help those who are hurting, to provide solid, biblically-based counsel to renew minds, heal hearts, and bring hope through changed lives. It also exists to empower you to help others so that you can be the voice of truth and comfort in someone else's life. We all experience periods of hopelessness. But hope is found in something stronger than anything in this world and way beyond any power that you've ever seen. And it's, it's in the Lord, Jesus Christ. When you realize that hope is found in dependence, not independence, when there's no other hope that you can find anywhere. Persevere, get into God's Word, pursue the Lord. Ask Him, seek Him. He'll open the doors. I had put my security in other things. I put my security in friendships or, or my skill or my talent or my ability or my, my own hopes and dreams and, and, and really began to see I wasn't depending on, on God. And the turning point was for me to be able just to release it to Him. And having me really understand that my identity needed to be in Christ and what He brought and His salvation and that He loved me just the way I was, flaws and all. And I didn't have to prove myself. I didn't have to be somebody or something that I just found my hope and my love and understanding of Christ through that. I came to a point where I knew something had to change and so I just cried out. It's, I said, God, if, if you're really real, if you can help me get out of this mess, if you can help me get off drugs, get out of all the trouble that I'm in, you know, um, I'll, I'll serve you 100%. I received life in areas that I had previously had death. And as I began to realize my identity being in Christ, that's where the hope began to come for me, to see that how God had created me and who I was and that I was valuable to Him. And I'm just so relieved is that God never, ever wastes the things that we experience. He never wastes a tear. He never wastes, wastes a hurt that we experience. Hope for the Heart offers biblical truth and practical wisdom in 60 countries around the world. But there are 136 more whose people are still alone, waiting for spiritual food, for living water, and for just one more second of hope. Hope for the Heart's teaching and counseling programs air on more than a thousand broadcast outlets worldwide, but there are some places where there is still no one offering hope in the darkest hours of the night. We offer biblical help in 24 languages, but there are about 200 more languages that have a million or more native speakers, some who have never even heard the name of Jesus, others not knowing his saving grace or the power he has to make something beautiful out of a shattered life. Will you be the one to offer them hope? God knows those whom He will bring into your life who need hope. You may not know, but He knows. And He's very purposeful. Jeremiah 29, 11. This is the Lord speaking. He says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Yes, there is hope for you. And as you share that hope, you can be hope for someone else who desperately needs it.